What even is extinction? It is scientifically defined as the termination of a taxa by the death of its last member. While that may seem straightforward, it is often quite complicated as species thought to have been game-ended are then rediscovered at a later date. These are known as Lazarus taxon, and the poster child and metaphorical granddaddy of them all is the coelacanth. In today's installment of Endangered Inhabitants, we'll be diving deep into the briny depths to meet Latimeria chalmanae, the West Indian Ocean coelacanth. Coelacanths are found within the clade Sarcropterygii, also known as the lobe-finned fishes. This ancient clade also includes all lungfish species and all tetrapods, including us, but that's a tale for another time. Coelacanths can further be classed into the class Actinistia and the order Coelacanthiforms, first appearing around 400 million years ago in the early Devonian. With a rich fossil history, it was thought that coelacanths of all kinds, which got crazy, disappeared from the fossil record at the end of the Cretaceous when the non-avian dinosaurs also kicked the bucket. One must understand that the oceans are very similar to when they were back then, allowing for coelacanths to remain hidden from science until 1938, when one was discovered in the catch of local fishermen. While often being considered living fossils, air quotes, this is only based on their supposedly conservative morphology relative to fossil species. While there has been limited evolutionary pressure to undergo morphological divergence, these animals have undergone significant genetic divergence, which is the most important factor when determining how much an organism has changed over time. Modern coelacanths are found within the genus Latimeria, with only two living species, the West Indian Ocean coelacanth and the Indonesian coelacanth. Molecular analysis suggested that these two species diverged from one another between 30 to 40 million years ago, with a 4.28% overall difference in their nucleotides. Females are larger in size, having a higher thickness ratio and metabolic rates than males. Average mass of adult females is 82 kilograms or 180 pounds, and the average length is 170 centimeters or 66 inches. Males sport a smaller but still respectable average mass of 37 kilograms or 82 pounds, while rocking an average length of 125 centimeters or 49 inches. Being lobe-finned fishes, coelacanths have lobe-like fins. Projecting from the body on stalks rather than attaching directly to the body, these paired lobed fins are supported by the same basic bones as our arms and legs. Coelacanths also sport dorsal and anal fins, a trait they share with most bony and cartilaginous fish, these not being as dexterous as their lobe-like fins. These coelacanths exhibit a deep, vivid royal blue color with white spots used as a camouflage tactic. This is known as crypsis, the ability of an organism to conceal itself by having a color, pattern, or shape that allows it to blend itself in with the surrounding environment. They also sport a massive pair of peepers that allow them to see in color. These large eyes are extremely sensitive to light, having an abundance of rod cells in the retina. Even when light is limited, as it often is where coelacanths live and when they hunt, they are able to maximize what light is available by combining these two traits. The lifespan of coelacanths is difficult to calculate as it is with many rarer deep water animals. Older estimates determined a lifespan of around 50 years, but more recent studies propose a lifespan of over 100 years in good conditions. It is important to note that a lot of deep water animals have longer lifespans than their surface dwelling counterparts, with the slower metabolic rate that this lifestyle requires. Found in the waters off of southeastern Africa, these coelacanths are found in the waters of Madagascar, the Comoros, Mozambique, Kenya, Tanzania, and South Africa. They seemingly occur in small colonies, with the largest being around the island of Grand Comore, the largest island in the Comoros. They usually live at depths between 180 to 210 meters, or 590 to 690 feet, with outliers being found as shallow as 54 meters, or 177 feet, or as deep as 243 meters, or 797 feet. In these depths, they inhabit underwater caverns while inactive. Coelacanths are opportunistic feeders, drifting in the current and slurping up any unfortunate fish or mollusk that they can fit in their mouth that has the misfortune of crossing their path. Known prey that coelacanths feed on include cardinal fishes, alfonsios, rat tails, and cusk eels, with more to be discovered in the future if they survive. 
Some individuals have been seen performing headstands as a feeding behavior, allowing the coelacanth to slurp up prey hidden in the crevices within the caverns they inhabit. This behavior is possible with the coelacanth's ability to move both its upper and lower jaws, a trait unique in extent vertebrates with bony skeletons. Coelacanths aren't very social. They do tend to aggregate in caves during the day, but there have been no observations of any social behavior whilst in these groupings. Any physical contact appears to be accidental and non-aggressive, like two nerds bumping into each other in the hallway at school. Coelacanths also possess a rostral organ, a large jelly-filled cavity in the center of their snout thought to be an electrosensory device for electroreception. This allows the coelacanth to detect the faint electric pulses all living things give off. This can be used to avoid obstacles, find prey, or even communicate with each other via electric communication. Coelacanths are ovoviviparous, meaning that they retain the eggs internally until they hatch, giving birth to live young. It is also likely that fertilization is also internal, with males having a modified cloaca as they lack a true copulatory organ. Direct observation of mating behavior is highly lacking due to how difficult this species is to study. They often give birth to between 5 to 26 offspring at a time that are all ready to be independent right from birth. These fish have a low fecundity, having long gestation periods of around 12 months with a max of up to 5 years! It is thought that females reach sexual maturity at around 20 years old, further adding to the low fecundity mentioned earlier. West Indian Ocean coelacanths are listed as critically endangered on the IUCN Red List. Current populations are unknown, with more assessment needed to get concrete numbers, but it is thought to be in the hundreds and in a state of decline. The greatest threat to these coelacanths is overfishing. This can either be through intentionally fishing for coelacanths or through bycatch, where fishermen sometimes catch and discard animals they do not want, but accidentally catch. While coelacanths are of little use to human as their meat is said to taste like garbage, there is still a local illegal trade of dead coelacanths. Live coelacanths can go up to numbers exceeding seven figures by some private organizations. These coelacanths live in several small populations that have near non-existent levels of gene mixture between them, making each population unique. This, coupled with their extremely low reproductive rates, means that every coelacanth taken from the wild is a blow that can slowly wipe out a population off the map. I would like to thank each and every one of you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. This was easily my most difficult video to write as coelacanths aren't exactly my strong suit, but this was a perfect opportunity to learn about them, which is one of the main reasons I'm doing this series. If you did enjoy this, make sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment about your favorite thing to put on a sandwich. See you all later. Peace.